Now to the most exciting trial not on television. I'm talking about the trial of reputed mob boss Whitey Bulger. And last week's testimony was some of the craziest yet. Who better to talk about this than this man? We love talking to him, John Red Shea. Uh, he once worked for Bolger, and he's the author of the book Rat Bastards, The Life and Times of South Boston's Most Honorable Irish Mobster. So, Red, let's go back to Wednesday, shall we? That's when this man, 54-year-old Stephen Rakes, was found dead less than 24 hours after he learned he had been dropped from the prosecution's witness list. It's still unclear how he died, but authorities say his death is suspicious. So. What's your take on this? Well, I mean, you know, I, I feel my condolences, first of all, to the family, uh, Don. Uh, there was a discrepancy in the testimony of one of the witnesses. Uh, what he had said before, then he had changed his mind about the whole situation with Mr. Rakes and how he was uh, uh, shook down for his liquor, liquor store. That said, Mr. Rakes went out after the uh, court trial was end, had ended, went out and gave an uh, interview to the news saying, hey, he had his day, and I'm disputing what he says, and I'm going to have my chance on the stand. Well, a few days later, and I knew right then, to be honest with you, that he wasn't going to be put on the stand by the government. The government wasn't going to let him dispute one of their star witnesses. Wasn't going to happen, whether he was a victim or not. Um, and, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes, unfortunately for him. He waited 30 years to tell his story, but he never got the chance to do it. Uh, what happened? Who knows? I'm not going to speculate on that. Um, you don't think it's suspicious? It's too early to speculate. I, you know what? I, I don't want to say that it's suspicious. I mean, it's a bit bizarre, yeah. But you know what? Who knows what it is? I don't want okay. to speculate because it All isn't right, the Red. right thing to do, Don. You've never been one to hold your tongue, so I mean, I, you must have good reason if you're hedging a bit here. So yeah, uh, I mean, you know, out of respect to, out of respect to the family and, and, and respect to him also. All right, let's move on to Thursday, Red. Okay, because Stephen the Rifleman sure. Flemmy took the stand. Flemmy is the prosecution's key witness and served as Bolger's right-hand man for nearly two decades. As he entered the courtroom, he and Bolger exchanged some obscenities. And then by Friday, he had admitted his role in 10 killings. He says Bolger ordered, including the strangling death of his girlfriend, 26-year-old Deborah Davis. It was that testimony that brought one of the jurors to tears. So, Red, you worked with Bolger. Did you know Fleming, and, and how damaging do you think his testimony is? Yes, I, I knew Stevie uh, well. Um, you know, the, let's put it this way. I've been saying it from day one. I've said it to uh, Deborah Farrick on your show, uh, CNN. Um, Stevie is the nail in the coffin for Whitey Bulger. He, wow. is, he was his partner. He was there for everything, Don. He was there for all the meetings with the FBI. He was there for 90% uh, of the killings. And everything that Whitey did, he knew about, whether he was there or he wasn't there. He was well informed. They were partners. But in the end, we know who the real boss was because, hey, what guy would let a man, okay, kill his own girlfriend, someone that he loved so much, whether he had dropped, you know, a, a, a little word to her saying that he, you know, they were associated with an FBI agent and had to meet him for, you know, and stuff like that, doesn't make, doesn't, doesn't matter. Mm. If he loved her that much, he would have never let, let him strangle her to death. Red, Fleming is going to be back on the stand for cross-examination next week before the prosecution wraps up its case. Then it's the defense's turn, leading to the big question, will Whitey Bulger take the stand? Do you think he'll take the stand? Well, uh, there's a choice of words that I would like to use on television, but I can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's put it this Thank way. I will, I will be, uh, uh, yes, you're welcome. Uh, I'll be considerate, and I'll say um, he has uh, a, lot of, a lot of guts in some ways, but you know what? I say he doesn't have the guts to get on the stand. I challenge him to get on the stand. Let's hear what he has to say. You know, his ego just might be big enough, and he does have a big ego, but I still challenge him to get on the stand. If he gets on the stand, they'll eat him alive. Huh. When you, um, 
With Stephen Rakes, when you see what happened with Stephen Rakes, you, you're hedging. You're saying you're, you, you said it's a little odd. You don't want to say it's suspicious. But do you ever worry about your own safety after you come on television, you say all this stuff, you, you don't hold your tongue, you say it like it is? Do you ever worry? A guy who's walked the walk and has never ratted on anyone, as we know, I can walk down any street, anywhere, anytime, and respected for being a man and taking responsibility and not pointing the finger at anyone in my life or in the life that I lived at the time. These guys here, they're the first guys to get on the stand to save their soul, to save their hide, and point the finger at each other. I didn't. I have nothing to worry about. John Ritchie, thank you, sir.